Good morning, I'm Christian Schaefer. Welcome to the Facebook page of Maryland's first television station, WMAR2 News. I'm joined by Joanne Iwanu from GBMC. Thanks so much for coming in. And also Matt Stover, Super Bowl champion with the Baltimore Ravens. Thanks so much for being here today. And we're here talking about nursing. Joanne, explain first what you do and why nursing is such a big deal at GBMC. So thank you for having us, Christian. So I am the Senior Vice President of Patient Care Services and the Chief Nursing Officer. At, That's a um, mouthful. <laughs> yes, it what is. Does that, what does that entail in a, in a typical week for so you? So all of the nursing staff report up to me and anything that it touches a patient for patient care services, I'm also responsible for. And how, uh, how many nurses are we talking about that you have working now at, at the medical center? There's close to 1,400. So what I see every time I talk to anybody who's been through a big procedure, whether it's having a baby or whatever, they come out of the hospital and they're talking about the nurses and how much they do and how directly they're involved in the care of the patient. Well, that is absolutely correct. So when you think about when you come to the hospital, everyone a part of the multidisciplinary team is very important. But the one discipline that is with the patients the most are nurses. Right. We are with them 24-7 if you're an inpatient. And they have the most influence on how we deliver care in terms of patient outcomes and making sure that the patient is going through the entire spectrum and eventually home in a safe manner. So nursing has a huge role in providing the care that needs to happen for a patient to get back to their original well state. It's so important. And that brings us to Matt. And you're here. Uh, they are now calling it Matt Stover, the nursing ambassador at GBMC. <laughs> How did that come to pass and what does that involve? Well, so many times inside of a team atmosphere, which of course GBMC has a wonderful team of nurses, uh, the kicker or the nurse becomes uh, not just the kicker. Uh, not just a nurse. Look, I actually had a huge leadership role on my team. And what did that look like? And so Joanne and I really hit it off with regard to that role and how you can esteem the position of a nurse, esteem the position of, of, of the uh, kicker. Because, there, you know, Ray Lewis, you can consider him the all-time leader of the uh, Baltimore Ravens, that he never belittled, never uh, be mind me. Uh, he was always esteeming me, empowering me to be my best. And that's what GBMC is really taken a hold of. Have you, you seen that in person at GBMC amongst the nurses when, when you go? Well, absolutely. In fact, I have a 15-year-old, Joe, who was born in 2003, and they've had a great foundation there. But with Joanne's leadership and with the changing of a culture today to esteem the position of that nurse, uh, Christian, I really believe that this is a great, great community hospital, and it's been the place for my family. Joanne, what's changed over the years that you've been involved with nursing? Uh, are people, do you feel like they're starting to get that respect after all this time? Yes, I absolutely think things have changed. Nursing has become such a diverse profession where the mindset I would say 20 years ago, if someone thought about nursing, they automatically assumed that nurse would go work in a hospital and work with patients at the bedside. Well, if you fast forward 20 years, nursing's, nursing has evolved to where you, become, you can become a nurse researcher, you can become a nurse specialist, you can become an advanced practice nurse, which is a nurse practitioner, you can do clinical informatics, you can be an educator, you can be a case manager. So if you think of all the avenues that a nurse can take, it, the sky's the limit. Do you know what I think the barrier to entry for some people who might want to be nurses is? It's that thought of the medical part of it and oh I can't if I see blood or if I see something like that don't do you do you feel that you have people avoiding the profession because they just feel like that wouldn't be for them and can people get past that and become nurses anyway so that that is an element you do have to have those discussions if someone is clearly squeamish of any sight of blood it's going to be challenging so let's be honest right but there's so many avenues that you can take in nursing once you get past that if you think you can that you don't have to be at the bedside or you can continue to do research or any type of thing um, that's within uh, the healthcare profession. And when I've been over at GBMC talking to some of the nurses there, there it's not that it, no one would enjoy seeing some of the situations that happen, but they do enjoy caring for the people and they understand that that's part of what comes with it many times. Well, at GBMC Healthcare, that we came up with the logo of the art of nursing for several reasons, because it is an art form. You have to have the uh, knowledge 
you have to have the scientific background, and you have to have the caring aspect. So, you know, one domain of that does not just define nursing. There's multiple things that go into becoming a nurse. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, you have to be really caring. Of course you do, but you have to have the knowledge and the science also to understand evidence-based practice and clinical outcomes and those type of things. Matt, have you seen any of the, the parallels that you talked about uh, being a part, not just a part of a team, but kind of a leader on the team? Uh, have you seen that in practice over at GBMC? Without question, uh, first starting with Joanne and uh, the administration there, empowering her to come in and with her knowledge, her base, her experience in the field of nursing, to be able to come in and actually create a culture that is going to esteem the nurse, uh, going to make sure that they have a vital role, not only just in the patient care, but in the hospital in itself. You know, Christian, uh, so many environments uh, that I've been on, especially team environments, if you don't esteem, if you don't create that, um, that importance for every role, you cannot be little roles uh, because we are all vital to the whole. Uh, if the right arm doesn't know what the left arm is doing, then you find yourself, you know, not doing your and performing well, or you're going to be a loser. And uh, GBMC is doing a fantastic job doing that, and I've seen that every day. Got Caesar on here making comments on the Facebook Live. Good morning, Caesar, and thanks. He says his niece just became a nurse. So there you go, people getting involved in the profession. It's just, it's great to hear. So we love when people just become a nurse because at GBMC Healthcare, we take the opportunity to foster and grow new graduates. We created the professional excellence model, which is a career ladder for nurses who are an RN1, who's a new graduate, all the way up to an RN4. And then once you can become a three or four RN, you can do different tracks. You can do a quality safety track. You can do a nurse education track. You can do a nurse administration track if you want to aspire to be a nurse leader one day. So our mission is to absolutely recruit and attract the best and brightest new graduates because we are investing in the individuals to foster and advance their careers. Matt, you had a long career with the Ravens as well and, and a couple other teams that we can say, but one thing I have seen among nurses is that they, they tend to, once they get into that field, they stay. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a long career that you can put together uh, and be a longtime professional nurse. Well, let me answer to this is Sam Cook. You know, he came in in 2006 and I mentored him through where he is today. I mean, we had four years together and we had the ability to show him what it takes to be a good kicker, to be a good punter, to be a good teammate, to be a leader on the team. And they are doing that. And I have actually come in and shared many of those stories and what does that look like? So it's not just in this environment, but what does a team environment look like outside of an NFL team? And being that I did that for 20 years, I've seen good and bad. And uh, so Joanne and I have really communicated that well and vulnerability, sharing with us, okay, share with us what the issues are on the team. I've been able to do that for my team as a player rep uh, for the Baltimore Ravens and uh, the Cleveland Browns even. Uh, there were many of issues that I was able to go communicate to the coaches so that uh, if there was an issue such as Harbaugh maybe breaking the rules or, sorry, John, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, this, that happens. <laughs> I was able to communicate that from our position as a player, as well as Joanne has really opened the doors up for that trust factor that is really, really resounding in that in their environment. Do you get a sense of the buy-in when the, the nurses are hearing what you're saying? And do, I know you see the parallels, but do some of them see the parallels as well when you do these? I'll programs? say this. There's many a times, Christian, that as a coach, they, like Brian Billick, when he came in in 1999 and the whole team went, we were from old school Baltimore Ravens with Ted March Broda with uh, – Bill Belichick, and all of us veterans are kind of going, really, you for real? And that's how they were, but already in just about a four to six month period, that is now the buy-in is there because they're actually seeing action behind it. And that's what it took with uh, Brian Billick is that he stated it, his you know, State of the Union address, this is who I am, this is what we're going to do, and then he implemented it, and that's exactly what they're seeing at GBMC. So there's a trust factor there yes. as well. Joanne, if we take a step back and just talk about um, – why GBMC is doing all this in the first place. Like, I guess the, the question is about the importance overall of having so many great nurses at the hospital. Uh, what, what's the point of doing all this in the first place? Well, there is a national nursing shortage. Okay? Really? Yes. And by uh, 2025, we're expected to have at least 12,000 shortage of nurses in Maryland. So, um, and think about our market is saturated. There's multiple hospitals in a very small defined area, and we're all competing for the same staff. 
But I am very passionate, and our team is a, about nursing and what we do for patients and for the health system. But I really think not only for the profession, but I think it is our professional obligation to invest in people and creating those teams. And one of the reasons why I decided that we should go with Matt Stover as my ambassador, because <laughs> um, when I first met him and he was explaining, because I am a huge football fan, um, of not being just a kicker, I was like, wait a minute, okay, it's not just being a nurse. You know, actually someone on my team came up with that analogy and it's so true because teams, irregardless whether it's in healthcare or on a football field or at the TV station, in order for an organization to function really well, you have to have high functioning teams. And everyone in healthcare and in our arena, whether you're a physician or a nurse or a respiratory therapist, we all have to work together to get the best clinical outcomes. So my goal with my team is to create those teams at the bedside, in the ORs, in the recovery rooms, in the ICUs. And Matt and I have the, you know, the same philosophy about leadership and teamwork and addressing the good, bad, and ugly that the synergy and what we bring together has really not only elevated what we're trying to do, but it's also bringing joy and everyone's having fun. And it's something different, you know, I, you know, you have to take the history of how the profession has, but it's a different time. And we have three generations that we have to attract to. We have <laughs> baby boomers, right. we have Gen Xers, and we have millennials. And they all have very different needs and expectations. And they all have to be a part of it. We have to say hi, good morning to uh, Lisa Ann, who's one of our biggest fans here on our Facebook page. She's joining us this morning as well. So good morning, Lisa Ann, thanks for watching. Um, and as far as you say there's a nursing shortage out there. Um, traditionally, I don't know if this is the most politically correct way to put this, but I think it's possible that we can generalize that most nurses tend to be women. Um, would it be a career that more men might want to think about getting involved in, given the shortage that exists right there? Yes, there's absolutely increase in enrollment in nursing schools of the male population, which is great. Um, I would agree with you, 20 years ago, it was very, very low where you would see, you know, very few men. Now it's clearly increasing. Um, are we 50-50? No, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. You might have had some, some, some experience with that too, as far as going into, oh, he wants to play football, but he's the kicker. I mean, is that kind of, a, is there a parallel with that part of it as well, with maybe more men potentially getting involved in roles within the organization that aren't necessarily the the main typical role that people think, think of. I think there's distinct traits that a man could bring into the nursing program, which maybe a woman couldn't all the time, basically on size and strength a lot of times. Uh, some of those issues that come into the OR or to the ER or whatever it is, I do see that uh, sometimes the way uh, men, uh, according to my marriage, uh, we think completely different, right? Uh, and how certain things can be approached. And I, I do see that as a full part of the team. And I do know that GBMC is doing their best to attract the male uh, nurse. Yeah, that's an interesting way to think about it because going forward, again, there's this shortage and that might be something for people to think about. I'm being asked on online on the Facebook page something that I don't know much about, so I'm going to just throw this out there and say, talking about patient ratios uh, with regard to, to nursing. Is that, is that an issue and how are they doing at GBMC with that? So we're, we're absolutely meeting the nursing standard in terms of I, the level of acuity. We're also um, rolling out where we our electronic medical record hmm. is EPIC and EPIC has helped us build an acuity scale so that we can look at all the necessary interventions that a patient needs to make proper assignments so we are absolutely um, on the forefront with the nurse patient ratios. When, when people are in nursing school or even I guess in, does it start in college at your undergraduate mm -hmm. university uh, and then the, the nursing nursing school um, do people look around for various hospitals or organizations to work with or how do they go about searching and if they do why should they pick GBMC over working mm -hmm. some other place as a nurse so they should look at GBMC and choose GBMC healthcare is because we invest in individuals and want to grow them in the profession there are other organizations that either, and I will do the analogy of um, when you apply to universities. Some people choose universities that are small size, some choose super large universities. 
Some people who do not want to go to a large university might say, I don't want to be known as a social security number. I want more individualism and someone to invest in me. That is the benefit of GBMC Healthcare, where we have the size that we can invest in each employee and to help foster their career. It's not small. No, GBMC. it's not small, but it's not a tertiary academic, um, which is a wonderful environment as well. But if you want more of the personal attention, you're going to find that at GBMC Healthcare. Got a question from a young man asking about what, uh, Tyler, thanks for the question, by the way, and he's asking what kind of attributes do you need uh, if you're thinking about, maybe you're in high school, going into thinking about what you might want to do in the future. What kind of things do people have that lead them to be good nurses later in their life? So I would say compassionate, empathy, questioning attitude, enjoy the science behind nursing, and also looking at outcomes or preventative care. How can we change certain illnesses by prevention, education, those type of things. Have you seen some of that too as well when you talk to the nurses at GBMC, some of that enthusiasm, uh, people get into this job because they want to do it. Absolutely, and, and GBMC with the art of nursing, uh, they have really just empowered the, uh, the nurse. Uh, I, I see that when I've been around many environments, you go into certain hospitals and they're just kind of sterile. That's not how GBMC is. You go in and it's alive and they're engaging and uh, they're not fearful. Uh, they, you know, she says something about the, the, the willingness to bring question. Uh, I think that's critical because so many times you're relegated as just a nurse and why would you have an opinion uh, from the physician to the administrator? No, they're actually asking for those questions to be brought forward and they've given them a platform to do so in a safe environment. So the program's called Not Just a Nurse and you're the head of nursing at GBMC. It might make lives better for nurses at GBMC, the program, but it also, in theory, could impact the patients and have the better outcomes going forward for them as well, if yeah. the nurses are given this, this heightened sense of importance. Well, not only that, but as what Matt just said, when you're a patient, you want somebody to be your advocate. And because nursing is with the patient more than any other discipline, they need to know the entire plan of what's happening with that patient and help the patient guide them through that experience. So it can make or break a patient experience. So having a questioning attitude as a nurse is absolutely, you always want your nurse to be questioning. And it's not because you're questioning because you don't think somebody knows what they're doing. You're questioning for clarification and make sure that's the right thing for the patient. Is that training? Is that like a bedside manner for nurses or is it that is. something that they're just born with and they're just naturally right. nice to people and inquisitive? No, there's a lot of training. <laughs> you know, when you think about nursing, nurses have to manage up, they have to manage down. They have to deal with multiple personalities mm -hmm different people coming at them for various things. So that is part of the training and we help provide that because you're gonna get some of it in nursing school, but there's so much you have to learn in nursing school because your main goal in nursing school is to finish your program, to pass your boards so you get licensed. The real training in terms of what you're gonna be doing every day because basically you're it. Once, once you're, you're licensed, you're it. You have to be able to answer questions. You have to be able to advocate. You need to get clarification, complex medical treatments, and so forth. So yes, that is, that's why we have an extensive orientation. We also have a nurse residency program. So if you're a new grad for that first year, there's multiple classes and trainings that you're gonna to go to to prepare you, and that's why it's considered a residency program. Laura Clary is one of our friends here at uh, the TV station, been named the most amazing nurse in America, and she's saying a comment about how she loves being a nurse every minute and loves working at GBNC. So thanks, Laura, for that. Yes, we always thank love talking you, Laura. To Laura. <laughs> yeah. um, and just as a backup again, the training, do you go to four years of undergrad? Is there more postgraduate after that, after undergrad, for, for a nurse? So to get your bachelor's in science and nursing, that's usually from a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. There's also an associate's degree where you can go to a community college, but the community colleges also have a bridge program that links you to, a, to end up with a bachelor's. Then there is a master science in nursing, and then there's either a PhD in nursing or a DNP, which is a doctoral nursing practice degree. But some people might be out there thinking, look, what if I start at a community college? That might be a good way to start. It could and be, very yes, inexpensive absolutely. As well yep. And then eventually you can continue and get your education. Because by the um, 
IOM, which is the Institute of Medicine, is actually, actually asking by 2020 that 80 percent of the nursing workforce be bachelor's prepared. So, Matt, you're pretty excited to be involved with this initiative. It sounds like uh, it's going pretty well so far. I've had a blast. I really have. Uh, Joanne and I, both Greek kindred spirits here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other reason why I picked that. That helps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've really had a great time. And being able to share story, being able to bring it to life, not only inside of the nursing practice, but inside of a, uh, of a team, has brought attention to it and has really crossed some of the cultural boundaries, has created the conversation. Uh, that is necessary to bring change and to uh, understand the culture so that therefore they can take ownership in it. Joanne, we've been talking about the beginnings of people's careers a lot. I got a question on here on the Facebook page from Anna who is wondering about more experienced nurses and do we ever get uh, attract you know people who've already had a long career at another facility to work at GBMC, what, what would be the incentive it's going to do on that? right now? Isn't absolutely, it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. We absolutely. I mean, there is. That's what's so great about um, what we offer at GBMC Healthcare is because not only do we attract the new grads, and I we are looking at it from a get generational. So if somebody's experienced, we absolutely, you know, the sky's the limit as well. It doesn't mean we are only accepting new graduates. We look at the individual and what they bring, whether you're a new grad or experienced. But we welcome all. Another question from Nancy uh, with another part about this training. This is very interesting to me because you're getting to hear some of the back and forth of what goes on as people prepare and, and go through their careers. She's wondering if registered nurses with that AA degree, uh, are they employable in hospitals or do you need the BS degree? You, she's seeing people move on to get higher degrees and leaving the bedside care behind almost, um, which may not be the traditional role of, of a nurse that people think of. Well, there are a lot of people who are leaving the bedside because, like I stated earlier, there's so many avenues that they can take. But yet we hire people who are AA degreed, but eventually they have to commit that they're going to be BSN because of the IOM expectation of 2020. I see. So there, but we give people opportunity and, you know, a few years that, to accomplish that. Is that a big change? Yeah, all from, hospitals from are doing that. Many years ago, because mm -hmm. it just, you, it, I don't believe, it again, that you always had to have that no, more advanced you degree. You, and, and it's, so a BSN is not considered more advanced. Advanced would be masters and so forth. So can you explain the difference just briefly between the AA and the so RN and the, and the an BSN? AA is, These letters are confusing, know, are confusing, confusing. me. An AA is graduating from a community college, which is an associate's degree. I see. Okay. A BSN is graduating with a bachelor's, and the BSN stands for Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And then an MSN is a Master of Science in Nursing, and that's considered advanced degree. And people are often working in the field as they're continuing Correct. with their degrees. So you could be an AA, RN, have your license, and say, work at a hospital and say, I am going to go back and obtain my BSN. Now some universities are actually getting rid of the bachelors and going RN to MSN. So there are some programs that you can even skip the BSN and just go RN, which is your AA degree, straight to MSN. There's multiple ways that you can go about doing this. And majority of the um, universities here in Maryland offer those different um, programs. So what can people do as we start to wrap this up? Uh, what are they, if they want to find out more about the program, either at GBMC or about this particular uh, Not Just a Nurse initiative, what should they look for? So if they are interested in coming to GBMC, they can go to our website and we have our Not Just a Nurse and all of the um, opportunities that we offer. Uh, we are absolutely available. We are screening, we're taking applications, those type of things. So we are very invested in all nurses versus um, new grads or experience. If they have questions about career opportunities or educational paths, we have people in our department who will meet with employees or potential employees who have questions about it. Okay, Matt Stover, Ravens Super Bowl champion, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Joanne for us. Iwanu, thanks Thank so much. You. And uh, the nice thing about these Facebook Lives is that they stay up on the, on the website. They don't just go away. So if you want to check this out, it'll remain on the WMAR Facebook page here. You can always watch that and get more information about the nursing programs at GBMC. Thanks very much, guys. Thank for you, coming Thank you in. Christian. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thanks for watching.